Welcome to episode four of Yuzuru Hanyu is my emergency contact, the Fanyu Fanmi podcast. I hope you've enjoyed all the episodes so far, whether you've been listening during your commute, your lunch break, or while struggling to shut your suitcase for an upcoming flight. <laughs> Did anyone else just hear that? Anyway, no matter where or how you fan you, this podcast is for you. And in this episode, you, my fellow fanus, are exactly who I am going to talk about. While my early fanuism came into existence upon my, oh, I remember him moment when Yuzu arrived in Pyeongchang, I was an independent fanu for the first few months following the Olympics. Yes, a picture of Yuzu was the very first addition to my refrigerator upon moving into my new apartment. And yes, I may have posted a picture on Facebook declaring Yuzuru Hanyu to be my new favorite human. But I had no fellow fan use to fan the flame that was already blazing. But then I found all of you and fully entered the fan universe. So thank you, fan use, for helping me to realize I am just as insane as the rest of you, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Seno. Fanus, much like HIPAA, are for real. Shortly after the Olympics ended, I started having Yuzuru withdrawal. Okay, so maybe the withdrawal started the moment he stepped off the podium. Wait, come back! I can't make it four years! This is when I found the Yuzuru Hanyu International Fan Group on Facebook, also known as Hanyu Anonymous, also known as Fanus also known as My People. Not just anyone can join the fan group. You have to be for real. In order to join the Yuzuru Hanyu International Fan Group, you have to take an essay test. HIPAA. As if that weren't crazy enough, I super stressed over these questions. Graduate-level Shakespeare survey? Physics? Bah! I laugh at your questions. Why do I want to join the fan group? What's my favorite yuzu program? What's yuzu's favorite potato chip? What do I think his hair smells like? Pantene! I got that one right. If yuzu's soul were a color, what color would it be? Yes, there is a right answer. These are the kinds of questions life just doesn't prepare you for. I clicked submit after some intense lavender blue soul searching. And I would be lying if I said that I didn't check Facebook every five minutes to see if I had been accepted. That's when I really started to get paranoid. Should I have specified the type of Pantene? And then it happened. I was accepted. And when I shared the acceptance on Facebook, of course, I had a few friends like it. <laughs> Foolish mortals, you know not what I have just gotten into. It's been nice knowing you. I have now entered... The Yuzu Zone. When I say these are my people, I don't mean just because they like Yuzu. They also like rules and order and tact. The admins run that site like the short program at the Grand Prix Final. Over by a second, deduction. But with a smile. At least during the afterglow of the Olympics, but we'll get to that later. Upon joining, you are directed to the group's rules. I mean the group's extensive rules. I mean the group's commandments. And there are definitely more than ten. Good luck carrying all these down Mount Sinai. Hmm, Mount Sendai? I'm pretty sure one of them said something to the effect of, Thou shalt not so much as think of glancing at another figure skater, or thou shalt be instantly removed from this group, and smoten where thou stands. But let's face it, like anyone in this group is going to look at another figure skater or another human for the rest of their lives. There are 19,000 plus members from something like 113 countries. There was a poll. It was well organized. And when I say the fan yous are thorough in their adoration of Yuzu, it is quite the understatement. We fan yous have blanketed the world and you can't get anything Yuzu related past us. Some of it is pretty basic. Yuzu's going to be in this ice show on this day, at this time, on this channel, doing this, saying this, wearing this, and smelling like Pantene. 
other things a little more obscure. Anthropology is selling a yuzu-scented candle. A brewery in Toronto has made a Taste of Yuzu IPA. Trader Joe's has a yuzu sauce. A. These people are insane. B. I posted the picture of the yuzu sauce. One of my favorites so far, the Vibrant Yuzu Deodorant. Let's clarify something. These products are being found all around the world. And while maybe the ones in Japan really are trying to capitalize off Yuzuru Hanyu's fame, the others are coincidental. Maybe. Because the yuzu is also a citrus fruit from Japan. About the time the photo of the deodorant was posted, I thought, I wonder if yuzu feels he has an unfortunate name. Thanks, Okaha-san, for naming me after something that people want their underarms to smell like. I guess it could be the equivalent of having your parents name you Cucumber Melon in America. But back to the Olympic afterglow. When I first joined the group, the sheer number of posts, articles, pictures, videos, and links was overwhelming. I couldn't keep up with it all, but golly bob I tried. Save for later, save for later, save for later. On top of all the content, it was a full-on love fest. And not just for Yuzu, for fellow fans. Look at this picture of Yuzu I drew. Aw, you are so talented. Sometimes, OMG, yes. Other times, well... How can I order a Winnie's in the Foist 2019 official t-shirt? I'll buy one and mail it 7,000 miles to you. They actually did. Look at this video montage I made of Yuzu with his cowlick sticking up. That's so creative, I never thought of putting a Maroon 5 song over a Yuzu montage. There's maybe a reason for that. Love, 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 support, 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 tact, tact, tact. It was rampant, but I have to admit it renewed my faith in humanity. These people are good. Almost decent. Once the Olympics officially ended, we had the ice shows, the victory parades, the award ceremonies, the coronation, the cloning attempts, and then it happened. Yuzu left Japan to return to Toronto to train. And thus, we entered what is known amongst the fan news as off-season Yuzuru Hanyu radio silence. The horror. It's around this time that the friendliness started to get, well, strained. It started small enough with the admin's general policing of the commandments, six of which are still being carried down the mountain. Use Butterwings 9. I love that picture you posted, but could you please make sure to edit your post to give credit to the photographer? Domo arigato gozaimasu. Eyes for Yuzu. This is a group for Yuzuru Hanyu. Please refrain from posting about other skaters. Arigato gozaimasu. It was about another certain figure skater. How was she not smoten? Yuzu Nyanya, your translation is inaccurate. Unfortunately, I had to remove it. Please be more careful next time. Arigato! Snooze you Yuzu! That link is no longer active. It has been deleted. By the time we hit the second week of Yuzu radio silence, they had resorted to one-word responses. My favorite? Someone posted a link and said, Look at this recent video I found of Yuzu talking about Japan and Canada. Kawaii! The admin's response? Old! At this rate, I'm not sure we'll make it to the beginning of the season. But the Fanyu ninjas are out in force. They're determined to keep our spirits up. Even if it means stalking a seven-year-old little girl's Instagram page. I'm serious. I don't know who got this job, but every time someone posts a picture of Yuzu posing with a random kid at the Toronto Cricket Club where he trains, I have two thoughts. One, how did they find this? And two, um, thank you. The number of pictures being posted of completely unknown people mugging for the camera is remarkable. Because in each of these photos, if you look way back in the distance, you'll see a recurring theme the often blurred lone figure with the jet black hair dressed all in black looking very, very kuyashi. This lone figure often has an arrow drawn to his head and a caption under the picture that says, We got you! Love? Dedication? Hobby? Restraint order? You be the judge. Wait, maybe let's not judge. 
Instead, let's take a brief time out to justify these devoted ninja fan yous. Yuzu is not on social media. At all. No Facebook. We'll get to that. No Twitter. No Instagram. No Carrier Pigeon. And why should he? He said so himself. Everyone does it for him. What else could he possibly say? I mean, when people are measuring the light refraction on an ice rink mirror to gauge if the woman sitting by the window near the rink is looking in the direction of the black smear reflected in the same mirror in order to prove that it is Yuzu's mom sitting rinkside watching him practice, therefore he must be back in Canada, well, you get my point. And here's the best part. Yuzu, when not breaking world records, rebuilding tsunami-stricken Sendai, or going to the emperor's garden parties, is an introverted hermit. He goes nowhere. Speaking as a fellow introverted hermit, I get this. Pop quiz! What's more attractive to an introverted hermit than another introverted hermit? Nothing! Now excuse me while I go find my protractor. Consequences. Before I found my Fan Yu family, I kept my Yuzu obsession neatly packed away. There it is again. In its own little dark corner. We will, of course, talk much, much more about those Fan Yu populated dark corners in future episodes. But this next post takes a look into the life of Fan Yu Fan Me. Before I had the bravery to advance my love for Yuzu from refrigerator photos to shouting my love from the social media rooftops, blogs, and podcasts. Seno. My sister has told all her friends about Chansung. She's also told all her coworkers about Chansung. She told a Starbucks cup about Chansung, to which the cup replied, I once had a friend from McDonald's who was dating a goth action figure, and shoo, I hope it works out better for you than it did for her, girl. As for my relationship with Yuzu, I told Cactus. His response? I think you're crazy, but I get it. Hmm, it's possible Cactus might be placating me. But I have played things pretty close to the best. Yuzu in a vest. That would count for at least another half a layer. I don't like going around telling the world, and beverages, about my intentions to wed. I don't even want the world to know I moved into a new apartment. Shoot, there went that. Cactus informed me that this was my way of fangirling with silent dignity. But I do have to admit that my non-Cactus friends are growing curious about some of my lifestyle choices. And why do you never sleep? A coworker recently asked. Shrugging Memoji became a real girl as I shrugged and responded, I just have things I like to do on the weekend. I'm a night owl. Aren't you learning another language? Yes, Japanese. Ooh, too much information. Should have stopped at yes. Or height. I thought so, co-worker responds. Dang, here's when your look at me working on kanji while I do laundry 3 a.m. Facebook post comes back to bite you in the, but why? Coworker persists. I laugh innocently. Everyone needs a hobby. I figure why not do something easy like teaching yourself Japanese? Can you say anything? Well, yeah. Do it! I proceed to tell her, in Nihongo, that I can understand a little Japanese, but that I'm not skilled yet. Coworker laughs and exclaims, You are so odd! I smile discreetly. If she only knew. I will admit that my silent dignity fangirling has alienated me from my coworkers in other ways, too. Yes, sometimes while I sit alone at a table in the break room, wearing my Iyahon and watching Yuzu ignore Nobu shouting bang at him on YouTube, I feel slightly lonely. Not that Yuzu and Nobu aren't great lunch companions but mostly because society has convinced me that sitting alone at a table in a break room full of people is a symbol of social failure. So occasionally I would crumble to expectations and, after pausing on a particularly entertaining moment of Yuzu side-eyeing Nobu, I would listen in on what I was missing by not being a normal, functioning member of society. After weeks of this experiment, here are the riveting, life-fulfilling topics I discovered I was missing out on. 
Number one, medical bills and the ailments that caused them. Number two, kids and the ailments that caused them. Number three, toast. No, thanks, society. I shout bang at your pressure to make me normal. You can drop dead. Still, there have been times I wished I had been more forthcoming with my actual hobby. One time, I was on a flight, and as we started our landing descent, the girl next to me pulled out her carry-on case and proceeded to do a full-on QVC makeover demonstration. I felt like I should be holding up a 1-800 number and counting down the seconds. Five minutes and 15 pounds of makeup later, we land and she starts FaceTiming with her boyfriend, who has surely smelled her perfume from the parking lot by now. She and I had exchanged occasional niceties on the flight, and by the time she hangs up with Babe, who can't seem to understand why the black suit is better than the khaki suit, who wouldn't understand that? (coughs) Toa. She casts a withering glance to me as if to say, aren't boyfriends such a struggle? In that moment, I had the briefest, tiniest glimmer of an inclination to say, yeah, I know. Mine's in Japan right now. He's a figure skater. I so was gonna do it. Instead, I simply smiled my most, aw, your life is so hard, smile, and we went our separate ways. I to Yuzu, she to fashion clueless babe. I have regretted not saying that for months. Life's regrets. Another time, I went into Hot Topic to pick up a couple Tokyo Ghoul shirts I ordered. The tattooed, pierced, non-wooden beard uh, guy at the counter opened the bags to make sure my order was correct. Tokyo Ghoul shirt, another Tokyo Ghoul shirt. Bet you can't guess what's in the other bag, I say. Tokyo Ghoul? Yep. Ah, well, the family that watches anime together stays together, right? Here's another opportunity. Do it! These are all for me. Nah, he can't handle the truth. These are for my boyfriend. He's a Japanese figure skater. He loves Tokyo Ghoul. Nah, he can't handle the truth. If my current boyfriend doesn't work out, I'm hoping Kaneki will still be available. Say it! But instead, I simply smiled and left with my black plastic bag full of ghoul and life's regrets. And with that, we finally get the lid shut and latches snapped on this episode of the Fan You Fan Me podcast. Okay, seriously, at this point, you just have to go watch the commercial again. If you'd like to read the blog, see the art, or wear the t-shirt, you can always visit Fan You Fan Me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Redbubble, or the official website at fanyoufanme.com. Until next time, say it with me, Yuzuru Hanyu. The Fan You Fan Me podcast is a Back to the Forest production. Back to the forest? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, just kidding.